They filed in like walking wounded, seeking sanctuary from battles back home. A parade of lame ducks, dead men walking. In tomorrow's papers, the metaphors will write themselves. The only leader not sinking in the polls, their host. The only one whose smile seemed genuine. For once, Italy's government is the most stable in the alliance. Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney hoping to build on that, to forge success here and give Ukraine's President Zelensky more help. But it is direct bilateral American support for Ukraine, a security pact between the two countries, that will be the biggest headline from this summit. Our goal is to strengthen Ukraine's credible defence and deterrence capabilities for the long term. A lasting peace for Ukraine must be underwritten by Ukraine's own ability to defend itself now and to deter future aggression any time in the, in the future. We have signed the strongest agreement between Ukraine and the U.S. since our independence. Allies have also agreed on using frozen Russian assets to lend $50 billion to Ukraine. Now, this is something that I and the UK have personally championed and led on for a while now, so it's very positive to see it close to the finish line. It will make an enormous difference, and it demonstrates the G7 is absolutely united in doing everything it can to support Ukraine to defend itself against Russian aggression. Hanging over this summit, though, doubts about the future of the alliance and its members. More unfortunate pictures, perhaps, each leader's national flag falling from a great height, like some of their political fortunes. But whatever the optics, this was one military display Rishi Sunak was not going to miss. They're all distracted by challenges back home, or potentially on borrowed time, but determined to use what they have left of it to help Ukraine. Will that be enough, though, before the winds of change sweep at least some of them away? Dominic Waghorn, Sky News, Barry, Italy.